Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Learn ES6. In this series, we like to go over some of the new features available to you in ES6. Uh, this episode is going to be all about modules. Um, before we get started, uh, if you haven't watched one of the Let's Learn ES6 videos before, uh, check them out. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below. Um, also, if you haven't seen the video on Gulp and Babel, um, be sure to check that out because we're going to be using a modified file for that. Um, I've set up a, a GitHub organization on github.com slash um, let's dash learn. Uh, this is a uh, organization I've set up to kind of store some files that we'll be using throughout the series. Uh, I uploaded the Gulp and Babel starter files from the last video on Gulp and Babel. And if you want to check that out, it's all here. Uh, it has the default structure, the Gulp file, uh, some descriptions of what's going on, package.json, and stuff like that. So you can get started uh, with that. There's a link to the video there. This uh, video is going to be using the Gulp and Babelify file. Uh, so a slight variation on the Gulp and Babel file. Um, realistically, and I'll show you on the side here, the only real difference is that we are using now um, Browserify and Babelify. And uh, let's walk through what's going on here. First of all, um, We've set up a file structure, a folder structure that looks like this. So uh, there is a source SRC file uh, folder, sorry, that has an app.js, and in this case has nothing in it. Uh, and what happens is we are eventually going to build into a build file, which uh, I just have some stuff because I was playing around, but ultimately there'd be nothing here right now. Uh, sure. So let's take a look at this uh, Babel file. So there's four new packages that we're using here. Um, we removed just the regular gulp Babel, and we are now using Babelify, Browserify. Uh, Babelify works with Browserify to transform. Uh, to get this to work properly, we include vinyl source stream and vinyl buffer. So this is what our new task looks like. Uh, so instead of using gulp source and kind of going through the process like that, piping it through, we now use Browserify. We give it the same source, uh, and we use the transform method on Browserify. Inside of the transform method, uh, we have to tell it what transform we're using. In this case, we're using the Babelify transform. And the same way that we kind of added the presets for Babel in uh, that video, uh, we have to tell uh, Babelify what presets to use. So by default, Babel doesn't use um, uh, or doesn't transpile ES6 by default or ES2015 by default. So we have to tell it and we have to download uh, specifically the ES2015 uh, Babel preset. All of this stuff is available for you in the uh, package.json file. There is uh, that there. Uh, I mean, even has the Gulp Babel, even though um, uh, we're not using that anymore. Maybe I'll take that out by the time this video goes up and update the repo here. But what happens is we take our code, we transform it through Babelify, and Browserify is a nice package that allows us to um, take, uh, hold on a second. It is a uh, nice package that allows us to uh, use um, modules and sort of bundle them all up and make it easy for us to uh, just send one file that has all our modules. So um, right now for module support, the ES6, we have to use something like Babelify uh, or some tracer compiler, something like that to actually work with modules. Uh, soon, hopefully, um, we won't have to do that. So uh, Babelify is really popular for using regular NPM modules and kind of bundling them all up. In this case, we can do that with NPM modules and modules that we're going to create. So we transform it and we send it through this bundle method, which returns a stream. So we need to use this special source, uh, which is the vinyl source stream uh, file, uh, sorry, module to uh, bundle it all up into an app.js. We send it through the buffer just to kind of collect the whole thing, and then we finally send it to its final destination, the build folder. And what's going to happen is when you save it, uh, it will create a new app.js file with all the bundled source, which we'll see shortly. So um, now that we've done that, we've looked at the file. Again, you can find it on github.com slash let's dash learn uh, gulp dash babelify. There'll also be a link for that in the description below. Let's talk about modules. So uh, modules in ES6 are pretty cool. They are the first time we've had native modules in JavaScript. There's been a lot of different uh, um, variations on modules. There's the common JS uh, kind of spec. There's the AMD spec. And using stuff like require JS, uh, 
and the similarly uh, the common JS node modules, um, we've been able to use modules for a while. So for example, require JS looks something like this where we require some module uh, that gets past no callback function and we can define our own modules by do do do. Sorry, just gonna grab an app.js file. Um, sorry. Here, you define a module like that, and then you can pull that in later. Um, Common JS is similar to uh, if you take a look at our gulp file where we have these require statements where we pull it in. In ES6, it's a slightly different syntax altogether, and it looks something like this. So first what I want to do is let's create a new SRC, uh, new file in the source folder. Uh, I'm going to call it my module. Uh, .js. Inside of here, uh, there's two or three keywords uh, that are kind of important with modules, import, export, and default. Uh, so what I'd like this module to do is just right now, we're just gonna export a, a default module. So there's two ways to make modules. There are uh, default modules and named modules, or sorry, default exports and named exports. So if we do export default, uh, and we'll just say uh, function, and let's just have this log, so console.log, uh, modules are, and then using uh, template literals, we'll say we'll say that this function accepts text. So we'll say modules are, and then whatever the text would be. So what we've created here is a default export, and every file can have one of these exports, uh, one of these default exports. Uh, you can you can't have more than one because there can only really be one default. So if we want to do more, we'd have to do a named export, which we'll look at in a second. But if we've made our module now, how do we actually access this? How do we actually get information from here? Let's jump back to app.js. And in the top here, let's say import. So this is how we uh, import them in. So import, export, um, import, and we'll say test mod from, and then we need to give it the file path. So I'm just going to say dot slash. So inside of this uh, folder, we'll say my module.js. And actually, the great thing about this is uh, it will know that it is a, a JS file. So we can actually remove the JS from that if we want. And if we run uh, test mod here, and I say uh, neat, nope. What should happen is, and we're going to open up our index.html file in the browser. And if we look at the console, we should be able to see, uh, oh, you know what's happening. We don't even have our, uh, our gulp file running. Um, so if you are saving this and you're not seeing anything happen, and if you check the build file, uh, build folder, which if you've downloaded the Git repository, you won't actually have, uh, we're not actually running that. So I have to go uh, run this file. So I have to go here. Uh, what is it here? Modules. Yeah, so I'm just going to go uh, gulp. And uh, I, can, I just have to run gulp, uh, the gulp task, because um, with the way we set up, and you can see the stuff there, we'll take a look at that in a second. The way we set up the task is we set up a default task that initially runs uh, the ES6 task. So this one, when we run it, and default is a special task in Gulp. So we can only just, uh, if we want to run it, we can just say Gulp. We don't have to say Gulp space default or Gulp space ES6. It's just a one keyword there. And inside of that default task, we're watching, we're listening on the source app.js file. And when something is changed on that file, we run the ES6 uh, task we've set up here. And it just kind of keeps watching and waiting and waiting and watching. So now, if I go back here and refresh the page, we see modules are neat, which is pretty cool. So uh, we have that. We have our first module working. And if you actually look at the uh, build folder now, the, again, if you downloaded this from GitHub, you'll notice that that isn't there at first. Um, but when you actually run this for the first time, it will create it if it does not exist. You can see all of this stuff that Browserify created for us. And you'll notice uh, there's actually quite a bit of co uh, code in here. Um, we can actually see uh, sort of our uh, 
uh, module down here uh, and all the other things going on here. And basically what Browserify has done is it's sort of wrapped up and enclosed all of our text uh, or all of our content uh, in its own um, module that allows it to, to render on the page. So we have a default module. Um, like I was saying, we can only have one default module when we're doing um, uh, an export. Uh, so we can only say export default once. But if we want to have more than one default, we need to use a different kind of export. So uh, default exports are one of the main ways you can export a module. Uh, we can also do named exports. So if we wanted to add another uh, module to this file, we could do something like this. So let's say, um, and let's do this. Let's make a new file. Let's call it math.js that we'll use. So I'm just going to close this file here. And let's assume that we're making a new math module. Uh, I don't know why you would really, because we have the math object, but let's just assume for the sake of this, because we'll have multiple different things, uh, multiplication, an addition, a division, and a subtraction. So if I want to export a named uh, uh, export, uh, I would do something like this. I could say function ex uh, export function, and then give it a name. I could say add, and this is gonna be a function that takes uh, A and B, there we go. And it's going to return a plus b. Now, I could also do something like export, uh, say, const subtract, uh, and say that is also equal to a function that takes a and b and returns, whoops, returns, no, <laughs> there's no s in returns, returns uh, a minus b. And in fact, I guess we don't really need this function keyword. We could just use an ES6 arrow function, like such. So now I have these uh, two modules. I have an add uh, module and a uh, subtract module. And these are what we call named exports. Um, and uh, what we've done here is we've kind of defined them a little bit differently, uh, differently but I just want to show you uh, that you can kind of put an anonymous, or sorry, a named function on there, or you could say uh, put a, a variable on there if you want it as well. So if we go back to our app.js file, uh, we still have our test mod there. Uh, let's import uh, the named ones. So if we go import, uh, Again, that's the keyword we use to bring stuff in. Now we need to uh, call out one of these modules. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. Um, one of the easiest ways is to simply use uh, a notation that's similar to destructuring, um, where we say we want to grab the add from dot slash math. And if we do add, I guess we have to console.log. Uh, actually, let's just do uh, const total equals add uh, two and four, and we console.log total. So if we run this again, we'll see that we get six. So we can pull in uh, based off of the name of the module, uh, the module itself. If we want to get both, we could do get add and subtract. And we could also say uh, const subtotal, uh, slightly misleading name because it's not really a subtotal, but we could say subtract, uh, let's say uh, six, uh, two, uh, two from six basically. And if we go console.log subtotal, save that and refresh the page, we see that we get four. So we have to use this syntax if we're pulling in uh, multiple different files and we have the names of them. The great thing about this is if you have a, a file or a module that you know that exports a whole whole bunch of things, you can just kind of pick and choose. You don't have to pull everything in if you don't want to. Another way you can do this, um, maybe I'll just comment out and leave that there, but another way that you can do this is you could use the asterisk. Oops, sorry, I've got to find it. And you can say import everything as, and then you can give it a name. So I'm going to say my math, because there's already a math object in there, so I don't want to get that conflicting. My math from dot slash math. And then, I guess I'll comment this out. If we want to use that, we can say uh, const total equals my math. So this is basically going to be an object now. My math dot add uh, two and three console.log total, there we go, 
and refresh and we get five. So this will pull in everything and store it on this object. Uh, and if you know the names of the different various different exports, uh, you can just kind of use it like that. So it's totally up to you um, as to how you do that. Uh, I do want to show you that one one last thing. So every file can have uh, only one name or sorry, one default export. But you can also have uh, multiple named exports and a default export in the same file. So let's assume maybe we have, uh, uh, oh, I can't find my keyboard there, export uh, default. Uh, and we'll just call this, uh, well, we'll just make this a function that does the division for some reason. Um, you'd probably have it do a little bit more, oops, uh, more than that or give it a better name. Um, but we'll say, let's see, return. Uh, a divided by B. So how would we pull in that module, the defo default one? There's no name to it. Um, how would we pull that in with all these different named exports? Well, uh, there is a different way of bringing this in as well. So we could do, and I'll just comment this out. We can say import, uh, and then we can first define the default name. So I'll say maybe divide, comma, and then we can say then pull in maybe add and subtract uh, from uh, dot slash map. Oops, there we go. And then of course that will use those again. So just to verify that, we're gonna comment that out, bring this back into play, save that, refresh the page. You can see that we get six and four. Uh, and then ultimately if I go const, let's say div total, equals divide, uh, let's do an easy one, 10 by two. And oops, we'll just console.log div total. Nope, that's not it. Total. You would think being able, being writing, uh, being on the computer all day just typing would make me a better typer, but it doesn't, but I don't care, not a big deal. Um, so we can see all of that happening there. Uh, again, you could also do the same as uh, the star. Um, if we do star my math, and basically, like instead of using, let's just console.log my math. Oops, math. There we go. And if you refresh it, you see that it just has an object that has add, subtract, and the default one right there. Uh, you probably will come up with your own preferred method. Uh, this method uh, here seems to be fairly popular, especially if you're doing a React project, um, just because I feel like that's where a lot of people are getting the first kind of taste of ES6 in this uh, importing. Uh, if you're doing like a React project, uh, you might be using something like React Router that has like the link, the router, the routes, stuff like that, and you'll see this commonly used. Um, so if you were ever wondering, wondering what that was, uh, what that was, uh, that's what it is. It's a uh, module that is exporting various named uh, functions or objects or whatever, and they're being imported uh, just like that. So uh, I hope you learned something uh, today about modules. Um, head over to letslearnes6.com. Uh, this is a website where I will be putting information about a book I'm writing. Um, if you haven't watched the kind of intro video on that, you can find it here. Uh, basically, uh, I'm gonna take the content I've been using on these videos and kind of put it into a more uh, structured manner in, a, in the form of a book. Uh, it won't be a fairly large book. Um, and it'll probably be one book. I have two books here, but I was kind of working out the structure in my head and kind of writing down and kind of getting into writing this. And I think it's going to be just one book that has about 19, 20 chapters, uh, some varying lengths, but nothing like really big, nothing uh, too much. The whole idea is to keep it uh, really approachable, really nice little chunks of information for you. Um, if you haven't subscribed below, uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, you'll constantly keep getting updates. Uh, follow me on Twitter at rchristiani. Uh, and other than that, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.